الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته it is so uh, pleasing to be back among my brothers and sisters I missed you all and I always remembered you in my prayers may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from everyone that's right <laughs> now today I would like to talk about the psychology of a dictator from the Quran so I'm going to refer to certain verses in the Quran to try to understand the psychology of dictators the way they operate the way they oppose uh, any criticism and how they try to silence opposition and when you try to admonish them or to advise us how do they react it's not something new what happened in Egypt been happening everywhere in the world and people will have to sacrifice their lives in order to gain their freedom let me start with verse 26 chapter 3 and I'm glad my dear brother Professor Sirajuddin is here so he can remind me with the verse number and the chapter. So uh, chapter 3 is Ali Amran, verse 26 sounds like that. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Kuli Allahumma malika al-mulk. Tu'ti al-mulka man tasha'u wa tanzi'u al-mulka min man tasha'u. Wa tu'izzu man tasha'u wa tudillu man tasha'u biyadika al-khayr. Now, let's try to understand this verse and refer to other verses in the Quran which has similar meaning. Al-Mulk. What is Al-Mulk? Dominion. Dominion. Sovereignty. Kingdom. Yes? Now, who is Malik Al-Mulk? One of the attributes of Allah is Malik Al-Mulk. The one who has sovereignty, the one who has power, the one who has control over everything in his hands. So, Kulillahumma Malik Al-Mulk. Say, I'm going to read four translations or five translations just to help you to understand the meanings of this beautiful verse. Say, O Allah, owner of sovereignty, lord of power and rule, possessor of the kingdom, master of the kingdom. It is you who give sovereignty unto whom you will. You give power to whom you please. You give the kingdom to whom you will. So it is not the election then. It's not the people who decide then, yeah? Because the constitution here is different from the constitution in America. Different from the constitution in France. And everyone comes to power. He follows different route. But it's only decided by Allah. It is Allah who gave the White House to Obama. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave the power to Sarkozy or to the coalition government here or to Mubarak in Egypt. It is Allah who decided to do that. So was Allah's choice wrong? So Allah was wrong in his choice. He chooses wrong people to rule us. كَمَا تَكُونُ يُوَلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ Prophet ﷺ said People deserve the government they got. We deserve that. It is a test to the ruler. It is, it is a test to the subjects. <coughs> Allah used here the verb tu'ti, to give. Now, what is the opposite for the Arabs to give? Tu'ti will be what? Ta'khud. Yes, ta'khud. Is that clear? What is the opposite of tu'ti? Ta'khud. To give, to take. But Allah did not use this. He said, تَنْزَعَ وَتَنْزِعُ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ يَنْزَعَ in Arabic means, you know when you extract a tooth? Very hard. You remove the authority, you remove the power, you remove the kingdom with great force. So because the president is sticking to the seat, he is glued. It is true, every person in power, 
even if you are a civil servant in charge of anything. You are glued to your chair. Because you want to be on this seat, on this chair, because you control others. There is an ego here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word tanza' by force, by death, by coup, because nobody will ever resign his job that easily and say, I'm leaving the office. You saw the fight between Blair and, and Brown. When Brown wanted to gain power and Blair was reluctant to give up his <laughs> Yeah, that's what you get when you, when you are not a democratic nation. <laughs> so, so this is the truth. It is you who decides who is going to rule and it is you who is going to decide when this person is going to be removed. Now they are thinking of making seats out of Teflon, you know? <clears throat> so nobody would stick non-sticky seats for all politicians. So when you go there, they will be able to get rid of you. وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ You exalt whom you will. You endure with honor whom you please. <coughs> From Izzah. وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ And you abase whom you will. You bring low whom you please. You humiliate whom you will. الذل بيدك الخير all good is in your hands and under your full control. إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Surely you have power over everything. Now if we analyze these words, today in Tahrir Square, two million people performed the Friday prayer. Two million people performed the Friday prayer. Who led the prayer in Tahrir Square? Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi, who was exiled from Egypt from Nasser's time, and he lived in Qatar, he came to lead the Friday prayer in Tahrir Square. Can you imagine? And what he said was so positive about the approach and the attitude of all these people, and he advised the army to hand over the power to the civil, to a civil, a civilian government and to release from the prison all the opposition. And he prayed that we will all pray in Jerusalem after it will be liberated. And I think today, today Israel was really shaking. While on holiday I met a number of Jews on my trip. They were so worried and so concerned about what was going on in Egypt. Because Mubarak is no longer there. When we talk about the kingdom, you remember the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 258, regarding أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِي حَاجَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ أَنْ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ A king who had been given the throne and the power was arguing with Ibrahim and Ibrahim defeated him. Again, it confirms that it is Allah who gives the throne or the power. أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ It's Allah who gives the mulk. I'm going to use the word mulk all the time so that at least you learn a new Arabic word. Malik is a king. The mulk is the throne or the authority or the sovereignty or the dominion. In Surah Al-Baqarah again, chapter 247, وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعْتَ لَكُمْ طَالُوتَ مَلِكَ Allah appointed a king for the children of Israel to fight against Goliath. So when Saul came, he was appointed by Allah and he had certain qualities to justify his appointment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Bani Israel at that time, they challenged the decision made by Allah who, who, because they, they said he has no money, he has no lineage, he has no power to rule us. We have more right to rule ourselves than him. And then they were told by their prophet Samuel that Allah has given him knowledge and physical strength. In Surah Taha chapter 20, Satan tempted Adam by saying to him, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُكِنْ لَا يَبْلَكَ Shall I tell you or show you the tree of eternity and a kingdom which will never decay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 verse 54 
فقد آتينا آل إبراهيم الكتاب والحكمة وآتيناهم ملكا عظيما We have given the family of Ibrahim the book, the wisdom and a great kingdom which as you know went all the way down to David and Solomon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also confirms the same thing in Surah Ali Imran chapter 5 verse 20 اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ جعل فيكم أنبياء وجعلكم ملوكا Remember the favors of Allah on you He chose prophets from among you and He made you into kings That's what Musa عليه الصلاة والسلام said to Bani Israel So again it confirms it is Allah who gives the throne and the power not the elections In Surah Saad chapter 38 verse 35 Sulaiman عليه السلام was praying What did he pray for? For قال رب اغفر لي Please Allah forgive me وهب لي ملكا لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي And give me a kingdom No one else after me will ever have such a thing Allah gave it to him And he gave him the power to control the wind and the jinn On the day of judgment When all of us will perish Including the angels And nobody will be there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say لمن الملك اليوم who has the throne today? Who has the control over everything today? Who is the real king? Who is the king of the kings? And then Allah will answer the question. لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the overwhelming power. So, number one, we were talking about Becoming a president or becoming a, a, a king or becoming an emperor or becoming a pharaoh, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a test to test the ruler and the subjects. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملناها وأشفقنا منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا So let me explain to you the meaning of this verse الأمانة Trust Allah سبحانه وتعالى Trust a ruler or a leader and he gives him the power to control people resources a nation and he questions him about this so in this verse verse 72 we did indeed offer the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains but they refused to undertake it being afraid thereof but man undertook it he was indeed unjust and foolish so the trust is something given to a person over which he has a power of disposition. He is expected to use it as directed or expected. But he has the power to use it otherwise. To abuse it. And that's exactly what happens when there is no opposition and there is no one to question. The one in charge of the trust. There is no trust if the trustee has no power. And the trust implies that the giver of the trust believes and expects that the trustee would use it according to the wish of the creator of the trust. And who is the creator here of the trust? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave the throne to these people and not otherwise. The Quran tells us about a queen, a beautiful queen, queen of Sheba, who was so just but she was an idol worshipper. What did they use to worship? The sun. This is in Surat and Naml, the ants, chapter 27. Now let me give you a brief description about this queen. Because Ibn Taymiyyah, in his writing, he said, I read it in Arabic for the Arabs. In Allah qad yansuru al-dawla al-kafira bi'adliha. على الدولة المسلمة بما يقع فيها من مظالم. That's Ibn Taymiyyah, who is known as Shaykh al-Islam. He said, Allah can give victory to a kafir state, to a kafir country, over a Muslim country. Why? Because the kafir country is very fair and just, and the Muslim country is unfair and unjust. 
just as simple as that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attribute is al-abd, source of justice. What is the point in claiming that I'm a good Muslim and I'm unfair, unjust? I abuse, I deceive, I cheat, I steal. There is no point. So, this queen, in her wisdom, I'm going to read exactly what she said. When she received the letter from Suleiman the hoopoe carried the letter, that was his email, yes? He took the email all the way to Queen of Sheba, dropped it there, and then she read the letter to her people. Ya ayuha al O chiefs, she was talking to her assembly, House of Parliament. We have dictators who claim all the time, it's only me and my opinion, you have to follow my opinion, I'm always right. I cannot be wrong because I'm in charge. And God has given me this because I deserve it. Stupid. Very stupid. I have received this letter. It's an honorable letter. L listen to what she said and compare it to what the king who argued with Ibrahim or Pharaoh later when I start to talk about Pharaoh. <coughs> I have received an honorable letter. It is from Suleiman. It is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And what is he saying? Do not be arrogant and do not go against me. Submit yourself as Muslims. Then she looked at the people at her assembly and she said, please advise me what to do. How many rulers in the Muslim countries would question the assembly if they have an assembly? If they have people who have been elected properly and he will say to them, oh, by the way, tell me what should I do? No, because they are so arrogant. They said, نَحْنُ أُولُو قُوَّةً We are so powerful and strong. And it's up to you to decide. So, you have to decide whatever you think is proper. It goes on and on, on and on. The story in chapter 27 and 9. Eventually, this queen, in her wisdom, and because she consulted with her people and respected their opinions, although they were Mushriks, used to worship the sun, went all the way to see Suleiman to stop her country having a war with him and when she entered the palace which was made out of mar grass, crystals, she submitted herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she said, Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi wa aslamtu ma'al Suleimana lillahi rabbil alam. Oh Allah, I have wronged my soul, I submitted myself to, with, with Suleiman to the one true God. That was the qualities of a queen who was worshipping the sun and how it was easy to convert to Islam. So, when Ibn Taymiyyah says, Allah will give victory to a dawla, a state, a nation, which is kafir, because of her justice over a Muslim state, because of their injustice. And there is no, you, you, there is no way we can close our eyes or shut our ears and deny the injustice which is happening in the Muslim world. We'll would be fooling ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran chapter 3, he commands the Prophet in verse 159, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فُلْ O Muhammad, consult with them in all affairs. In chapter 42, it's known as a shura consultation. Verse 38, وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَ بَيْنَهُمْ One of the attributes of the believers, if you are really a good believer, you should consult with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your colleagues at work, with your relatives. When you are about to make an important decision in your life, consult with others and then do your consultation prayer to consult with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let me go to Mr. Pharaoh now, the Egyptian pharaohs. Pharaoh is a title, like king or Kaiser or Caesar. It's a title of the rulers of Egypt. <coughs> Egypt only had a time when there was a king, at the time of Yusuf Qala al-Malik, the king who saw a dream, he was not a pharaoh. There were from the Hoxos who occupied Egypt at that time, he was a righteous king. Pharaoh is the title of the rulers of Egypt. When an Egyptian would exceed his limits or transgress beyond the limits, he is called a Pharaoh. Even a wife would say to her husband, you would hear this very often, you are becoming like a pharaoh in the way you dictate things and you command things and you order things. In Surah Taha chapter 20, verse 24, Allah says, 
to Musa, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى. I want you to listen very carefully to this. Go to Pharaoh. Because he transgressed all bounds. The word, I want you to remember the word طغى. I'll come back to it in a, in a minute. Musa was very concerned. So he asked for his brother to assist him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same surah, chapter 20, verse 43, إِذْهَبَا إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَى Go both of you to Pharaoh because he transgressed all limits. But when you go, talk to him nicely and kindly and politely. He may reflect, he may rethink, he may adjust his conduct. How beautiful our Lord is. How kind our Lord is. Instead of sending Musa and Harun to Pharaoh and he said to him, go and put a bomb under his throne or go and burn his palace. He didn't. Go and talk to him nicely, kindly, mildly. He may reflect, he may change his position and he may believe in me and he may be good. The word the Taha is explained beautifully in Surah Al-Haqqah, chapter 69, verse 11. إِنَّا لَمَّا طَغَى الْمَاءِ Taha, you know when the water exceeded its limits during the flood of Noah. It was not like Queen's state, what's called? Queensland, I think, in Australia, where we had the, the, the floods. No. No, that was nothing compared to what happened at the time of Nuh The earth started to bubble, the desert <coughs> opened its springs, the skies were fully opened, and the water from the sky and the earth met together. Can you imagine? The water from the sky and the water from the earth met. That was the word Taha. So Pharaoh reached a point when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not tolerate it anymore. So he had to send someone. Could you please move forward, please move forward, please, and sit next to each other. Now let me very quickly mention some of the, uh, what Pharaoh used to say, the speeches of Pharaoh. In chapter 28, he addressed the nation and he said, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنَ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأْ O people, O oh my chiefs, مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِ I know not of any other God to you but me. So he spoke to his chief of staff, Haman. Haman, would you mind please to build very lofty palace so I can climb all the way up and look for the God of Musa and I think he's a liar. And he was arrogant and insolent in the land beyond reason. He and his hosts, he and his soldiers, he and his minister of interior, minister of information. They thought that they would not have to return to us. So we seized him and his hosts and we flung them into the sea. Now behold, what was the end of those who did wrong? And we made them leaders inviting to the fire, and on the day of judgment, no help shall they find. In this world, we made a curse to follow them. And this is known as La'natul Fara'ina. It's known, very well known fact. If you read books of history, anything about ancient Egyptian archaeology, they use this word, La'natul Fara'ina, the curse of the pharaohs. In this world, we made a curse to follow them, and on the day of judgment, they will be among the loath and despised. In Surat Ghafir, chapter 40, there was an opposition, a hidden opposition, which started from the court of Pharaoh. So, Pharaoh stood up and he said, Dharuni aqtul Musa wal yad'u rabbah. Let me, leave me, free me, let, as if they've been tying his hands. Let me to kill Musa. And let him call on his Lord. I am very worried that he might change your religion or spread mischief in the land. So he tried to find an excuse to justify silencing Musa or imprisoning him. No, he wanted to kill him. That's what exactly been happening in the majority of the Muslim countries. 
the opposition will be jailed, imprisoned, tortured, killed, and then the people had to revolt. So a member of his cabinet had to revolt. He had enough. He could not listen anymore to the rubbish said by Pharaoh. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ A believer, a man from among the people of Pharaoh who had concealed his face said, Why do you kill a man who is claiming that Allah is his God? And it goes on and on. This is Ghafir chapter 40. Then Pharaoh responded to the criticism by saying, مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى وَمَا أَهْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ I have told you what I think and I'm guiding you along the right path. He doesn't accept any opposition, he doesn't accept any criticism, no advice, no consultation, nothing. This is my opinion. This is either this way, my way or the highway. In Surah Al-Zukhruf, chapter 43, from verse 51, and Pharaoh proclaimed among his people, saying, O oh my people, does not the kingdom of Egypt belong to me? Can't you see these rivers flowing beneath my palace? <laughs> Don't you think I'm better than this stupid, despicable Moses, who cannot even speak properly? Why he hasn't got any golden bracelets on him? Why the angels are not accompanying him? Allah ends this by saying, <laughs> He fooled his people, and they listened to him and they obeyed him. He made them into fools, and they accepted what he said. What was the punishment? When they really annoyed us, and angered us, and provoked us, we exacted retribution from them, and we drowned them all. And in conclusion, Alhamdulillah, that when a president of a country who came to power, with false elections, exceeded his limits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on him someone from sources we will never imagine. And the first source was Tunisia, a very peaceful country, very small country in the middle of North Africa. Very, very nice and kind people. They decided to revolt. And they started the spark of the revolution in the Arab and Muslim world and Egypt followed and the dictator the Pharaoh who did not want to leave he was forced to leave and today during the Friday prayer in the Tahrir Square and two million people attended the Friday prayer Sheikh Al Qaradawi came all the way from Qatar when he was not allowed to enter Egypt for the last 50 or 60 years now since Nasser's time and he led the prayer in the Tahrir Square and people shouted down to Mubarak and his family and the corruption and the money they stole is enough to pay the debts of Egypt. And today the world is watching, watching and so anxious because the Muslims started to wake up. And this is the most important thing. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fajr he says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَانِ الْعَشْرِ وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَسْرِ هَلْ فِي ذَلِكَ قَسَمُ الَّذِي حِجْرِ أَلَمْ تَرَ أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِعَادِ Haven't you seen how your Lord dealt with the tribe of Ad? الَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلَهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ No other country or nation was created like them. وَفِرْعَوْنَ ذِي الْأَوْتَادِ And Pharaoh who had the Awtad, the فَأَكْثَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ They spread mischief everywhere. فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ صَوْتَ عَذَابِ Your Lord poured on them a true punishment. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِالْمِرْصَادِ So just remember these few words. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِالْمِرْصَادِ Your Lord is watching over you all the time. When it reaches a point, when Allah will not tolerate it anymore, something will happen from sources you never expected. And you never thought it will happen. I am going. We have few announcements to make. Very, very quickly, please. After salah.